Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Today we're going to take a look at the 10 things you need to know before buying a solar generator. What do the different features mean? What size do I need? What's the difference between a brand and a no-name one? And we're going to do it all in under nine minutes. First big question you want to ask is, what in the world do I want to use this for? The two main reasons are camping or for backup power. If you're looking for camping, you might be able to get away with a slightly smaller one. You're gonna run a few lights, you're probably gonna charge your devices, you might run CPAP machine, radio. Now, if you're looking for backup power, then you're gonna maybe want something a little bit bigger. You're gonna want something that will take care of you for the average North American power outage of about four hours. You know, maybe run your fridge for an hour, maybe run your freezer for an hour, or maybe run a sump pump a couple of times. Number two, wattage. You're gonna get a few different numbers. You're gonna get total watts, running watts, and peak watts. The one you're looking for the most is total watts. That is typically rated in watt hours. If you're just using it for something like a little bit of camping, 500 or less is probably pretty good. If you're looking to use it for just really emergency backup power in your home, you're gonna to wanna to try to get closer to the thousand. Running watts is how much power can be pulled out of the device while an item is running. And peak watts is something that it can peak really quick for a fast draw, something like a fridge kicking in or a furnace blower motor. Number three, is budget. And when you're dealing with these small, compact, portable power stations, the two we're gonna talk about today for the portable are 250 and under and 250 to 500. So if you're looking for something for backup power around the home, you're probably looking in the $500 range. This guy comes at 499 on sale. The PowerSmart comes at 249 on sale. So you gotta figure out how much money do you actually have to spend because that's gonna be the kicker. And you wanna look at the most features you can get for the least amount of money or for what fits your budget. Number four, weight. Does it matter? Well, I mean, I guess it depends. The lower priced one right here is about eight and a half pounds. This one here is a little over 22 pounds. Most uses for this, whether it's indoors for backup power or camping, isn't gonna require you to carry it very long. If you're backpacking, you probably need to rethink your backup power solutions. Just give it a consideration. What are you using it for? How far do you have to carry it? And does weight really matter? Next you wanna look at is speed of recharge. So how fast are you gonna to need to recharge it? If you're out camping, are you cool with hooking it up to a solar panel and letting it charge the full day? Or would you rather be able to plug it into the wall and charge it to 80% in 40 minutes like the Blue Eddy or two hours to full? Number six, battery type. There's really two main battery types in power stations. The traditional one that's been around for a little while, lithium ion, and the newer ones, Life Po 4 lithium iron phosphate batteries. What are the advantages? LifePo4 batteries, you're gonna get about four times the amount of discharge cycles. Lithium around 1,000, LifePo around 4,000. The chemistry of LifePo4 batteries is significantly safer than the lithium ion batteries, although both have gotten extremely safe over the years. The other really cool thing about LifePo4 batteries is they have a 100% depth of discharge, which means you can drain them right down to zero and recharge them without any adverse effects. LifePo4 lithium iron phosphate batteries tend to weigh a bit more than lithium ion. So if weight is your only concern, go with lithium ion. And number seven, is the one that a lot of people overlook or some people take it too darn serious. <laughs> and that's the number of ports. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to look for is two regular wall plugs, two ACs, because you don't wanna to have to have a splitter hooked in there. Something most people don't think about is a DC port. Like, I don't need a DC port. You'd think you wouldn't until I replaced mine in my truck with a USB-C and then all of a sudden I'm like, well, what am I gonna plug in my compressor with? I've used it a bunch of times. It's not a deal breaker, but make sure you have it. Also, look for the solar. The cheaper ones tend to have their own proprietary solar hookups with some weird wires. Look for something fairly standard, like that design right there. And then your USB ports. I could care less if I had any USB A's. Most of them are gonna have a couple. But what I look for in a power station now is two USB C's. And of course, how fast are they? Look for ones that have a 100 watt USB C if you're looking to charge your phone on it in under an hour. If you're cool with spending a little bit less money, a lot of them, like the PowerSmart one, will charge at 60 watts. Probably the most overlooked item on these is the charging port themselves. So what I love about some of these higher end ones is they take a standard power supply cable, just whatever would plug into your normal power supply on your computer into the back of your monitor. So if you lose this, you can go to any junk store, Salvation Army, whatever, and get a replacement. Most of the other ones come with big beefy bricks with their own kind of semi-proprietary AC adapter you lose that, you're hooped, because then you gotta order a specialty one for quite a bit of money. That, to me, is a make it or break it option. Number eight, 
brand and warranty. And do they matter? Well, they may to you. So you really have two tiers. You kind of have the brand name and then you have the Amazon generic. And the four brand names are Anchor, Blue Eddy, EcoFlow, and Jackery. And then on, I call them the Amazon generic, but you're gonna find them in all big box stores. You're gonna find them on Amazon, eBay, places like that. And they're gonna have names like Avapower, PowerSmart, All Power, and they tend to be about half the price of the brand names. But the fit and finish tends to not be quite as smooth and as nice as the brand name. And one of the big differences with brand name versus no name, for the most part, is warranty as well. Most of the big brand names come with four or five year warranty, whereas the Amazon knockoffs tend to have a two year warranty. Next is solar. Now you might say, Tim, it's a solar generator. I have to have solar. Well, actually you don't. The cool thing is, is all of these come with multiple ways to charge through your vehicle, through an AC port at home, or through solar. If you're only using it as a UPS, you don't need solar. If you're only using it as backup power for your home, you might not need solar. If you're looking at using it long-term or for camping, then you're gonna have to consider solar panels. And then there's really two options. The rigid ones, like these, that are still kind of portable, they're 120 watts, 200 watts. You can get them at Costco, you can get them at big box stores and they work great. Or for about 30% more, you can get the fold up ones. Finally, number 10, and I call these miscellaneous features. The first one is, does it have a light? You might say, well, that's stupid. I used to think it was too, until I went truck camping last year. This guy's got a light up here and a light over here. In the evening, when I'd hop into my tent and I'd wanna have a meal, I'd have that light. Screen information. Well, the big one is, this guy gives you a nice bright LED with in and out puts on both sides, DC, AC, a uh, visual representation, 99%, how long it'll take to charge. And then something like this gives you kind of a simple LCD readout, just with a visualization of the battery and a percentage, and then it'll tell you the draw time over there. If you're a geek for information, the brand names definitely give you a better readout. Does it have an app? I don't need an app, but some people like an app. So if you have a reason to want to be able to control it via Bluetooth, check it out and see if it has an app or not. Can it be used as a UPS, an interruptible power supply? I have one downstairs in my basement that I use strictly as a UPS so that if the power goes out, my computer keeps running. If you're gonna use it as a UPS, you're pretty much strictly set to using it as a UPS. And probably the coolest miscellaneous feature that I've seen in all the different ones that I have reviewed so far is in the Blue Eddy, they have a power lifting mode, which allows you to run resistive loads like an electric kettle, or like a space heater, drops the voltage, which brings down the overall wattage, which allows it to give it a little bit less power and still run heat-based and resistance-based items. Well, since I still got a minute or two, let's outline the differences between these two and then it might help you figure out what do you need? I mean, number one is the budget, right? This guy's $249, this guy's $499 right now. This one has 288 watt hours. This one has almost three times as much at 768 watt hours. This guy weighs just about nine pounds. This weighs just over 22 pounds. This guy takes about six hours to charge fully. This one charges fully in two hours into 80% in about 45 minutes. The lower priced one has a lithium ion battery. The Blue Eddy ends up coming with a Life Po 4 battery. And then if you're worried about warranty, two year on the PowerSmart, five year, on the Blue Eddy. The Blue Eddy's model number is AC70 and the PowerSmart model is PS5150. I'll have links to everything down below. If you end up wanting to support the channel, pick something up, use the affiliate links. All right, and if you're still here, that means I made this Power Station video just for you. Hit that subscribe button, stick around because I got a ton more videos just like this for you to check out. And if you're just going down the rabbit hole of Power Stations and you wanna check out a more in-depth review of this guy right here, check out that video right there. And guys, as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.